University of Miami professor of marine science, Jerry Ault and his team, have been fishing for tarpon since 5 in the morning here in the Florida Keys. <laughs> tarpon is an angler's dream. Big, fast, strong, and able to jump over three and a half meters high in the air. The passion for the sport lies on the tarpon's elusiveness. This is a powerful animal that puts up a big fight. After 30 minutes of back-breaking work, this team is finally able to bring the tarpon close to the boat. It's ours. But this team is here not just for the sport. They study tarpon and bonefish. They measure their catch, 1.6 meters long, 62 centimeters in circumference. It weighs around 60 kilograms. They then take a DNA sample and implant a satellite tag on its back. It's a satellite tag on the animal. For the next few months, the tag will constantly record the fish's environment for location, depth, salinity, and water temperature. Professor Alt explains what will happen in a few months. The tag separates from the fish, it rises to the surface, it connects to the Argo satellite network, uplinks the data, and then I get an email that uh, basically like ET is phoning home. It's Until now, very little research had been done on the tarpon. But as the fish's numbers began to dwindle over the past few years, the demand for more information about the fish has increased. Because billions of dollars are at stake with the loss of the tarpon population, Professor Ald found several organizations willing to shell out some cash for research. Currently in Florida, commercial fisheries generate about a billion dollars a year total economic revenue. Recreational fisheries are estimated by the state of Florida to generate $10 billion a year revenue. Recreational fishing in Florida is now more valuable than the citrus industry. This group of anglers were taking a break at a local restaurant. They have been coming for decades to the Florida Keys to fish tarpon. Anai Brackett is a fly fishing guide from Georgia. He has been coming for the past 42 years. I've fished all around the world, uh, and, and there's just no question about it that tarpon are the most spectacular game fish in the ocean. It's extremely exciting. Professor Ott also dives into one of the most popular destinations for tarpon today, the shadowy depths under bridges. He documents their number and size. He says many factors are now threatening one of the strongest and oldest animals in the ocean. That includes removing bite shrimp, one of the tarpon's favorite foods. Today they take on the order of a um, half million pounds of shrimp, immature, that are being removed. We've introduced pollution through land-based runoff. We've degraded the habitat, so, so it's a combination of things. Through his satellite tagging and research, Jerry Ault has found out some valuable information that may one day help the tarpon from decreasing in population. He has found that tarpon can travel great distances to find their ideal water temperature of 26 degrees centigrade. From Florida, they can travel nearly 2,000 kilometers north on the U.S. coast or south into the Gulf of Mexico, Central and South America. Unfortunately, when it crosses the U.S. border, it's catch and consume. And so for fishes that live the lifetime of tarpon, 80 years, they're very vulnerable to any level of exploitation. Margaret Miller is a coral researcher at the National Marine Fishery Service in Florida. She says the raising temperature of oceans could endanger many species, including the tarpon. That's going to disrupt the cues that the animals use, the timing likely where they're cued to begin migrations, and this is likely to affect a broad range of species as well. And so, after a decade of serving the tarpon, Jerry Ault feels he has just begun to understand a fish that survived the extinction of dinosaurs, but whose future is now threatened by human activity. For BOA News, this is Zulima Palacio from the Florida Keys.